the best thing we can do for the wildlife in our garden is to provide them with a safe, dry, clean, warm place to nest. This is a big, a large, uh, hole-fronted box for a starling. The, the diameter of the hole is 45 millimetres. Um, but again, they, they would prefer it a bit higher, but they, they're quite happy to use this nest every year. Um, I painted the box the same colour as the shed, just for appearance sake. Um, but they, they, they're happy to, to nest at this at head height, uh, no problem, and they use it every year. So during the really cold months, sort of win deep winter, short days, long cold nights, November, December, January, February, small birds, given their small size, they lose a lot of heat relative to their body mass. So they need to feed constantly, uh, especially on oily food like the fat balls, the peanuts, to store during the day and they burn that fat during the night to keep themselves warm, to keep themselves alive. Once they're able to get past that really difficult time, the months of February, March, the weather starts to get better, warmer, longer days, there's a little bit more food around, the insects start moving, they switch to concentrating on territory and nest sites. A nest in this, a nest box, an open fronted nest box in this clematis for about 10 years or more. And I think you can just see where the, where the box is. There's the open front, um, some nest material pushed out over. So in the past, robins, pied wagtails, house sparrows and starlings have all nested in this. The idea is you'd have it hidden behind a creeper, um, sit it right in there and let the creeper grow down in front of it. Uh, maybe trim it every so often, but you, you need it nicely hidden. So this is a, a house sparrow terrace. There are actually three nest boxes in one. There's a hole here, a hole here, and a hole there. And there's two walls in here. So this box is, again, it's a 32 mil. It's a, it's a bigger, bigger board. It's, um, I think it's seven by one inch. Uh, and in general, sort of the bigger the cavity inside, the better. Uh, they can produce more eggs and more chicks um, if the box is bigger. Uh, I've got the hinge roof and, and a clip to hold it down to clean out the box at the end of the season. But once the birds start nesting, you don't want to go near them. You don't want to lift the box and be tempted to look in. Leave them alone. Um, you need a, a license from the wildlife service to examine nests of wild birds. So the thing is, just watch them from a distance and you'll see all the, the uh, life events, all the nests building, feeding the chicks, and the chicks fledging. You'll be able to watch all that from a distance without looking into the nest. And then just at the end of the, the breeding season, you can empty out the old nest. So right now, this is the late February, early March. Uh, you can hear the great tit singing away there. Birds are starting to sing more. Uh, they don't have to worry about food so much. So now they're checking out nest boxes. Um, some of them will sit close to the nest box and defend it against all comers. And really, once April comes, they're in nesting in full swing. They're starting to lay eggs. The idea is then that for a lot of them, they want to have their chicks during the best of the weather with the longest days so that they have the most time to find food for them. And then when the autumn comes, when the chicks are out fledged, there's, there's a bumper crop of food out there and they have a nice time. They can actually molt their feathers and grow new feathers at that stage. And the full cycle starts again then in the winter when they're, they're back ready to face the winter again. I right, said, so I'm gonna take out last year's nest. What happens is uh, you get parasites like ticks and my mites that live in the nest material and by getting rid of it, it just makes it healthier for them for the next year. They'll build up a new nest in a matter of days really quickly, so there's no problem there. We're going to start um, to make a small 
hole fronted box it's the smallest and simplest box to make and we're going to use uh, a board of uh, what I would call six by one inch which is uh, 150 mils wide and 15 millimeters deep and this is six by one planed um, it's very easy to work with and that's it that's the full piece of board that's going to make the box I've downloaded a PDF from the Birdwatch Ireland website and I'm going to use the measurements of this. So the first thing we're going to uh, mark off are the two sides. So they are they're going to be sloped so it's 200 at the front and 250 at the back and then they're going to be the two sides um, so 200 and 250 will give me a 450 total try and get this as square as possible and then use the back of the saw as your straight edge and they're the two sides So the next piece is the base or the floor and that's just 120. Now this doesn't have to be perfect because if you think about it these birds nest in the wild in cavities in holes in stone walls. So the roof is 220 because there's a bit of an overhang. So this is going to be the roof and I want an angle just it doesn't really matter but just kind of like that now so that's the roof and I've put a little bit of a slope on it the front is 200 so what we're left with is the back it's 460 mil Okay, so we'll start to assemble it. So that's like that and that's like that. This is the only one that goes across. We'll put in the floor next. And we want the floor to sit in there. And actually, if it's a little bit if it's a little bit up from the level of the side walls it's no harm because we want the rain to fall off and I can put on the front so here's the reason why I had to cut that sideways that cut earlier that was sideways you see the angle I cut at to match the slope and when the roof goes on the roof will match the slope as well and it just means there's less chance of rain getting in We don't want to fix the roof down, we want to be able to open it so that we can empty the old nest out at the end of the season. I've used a piece of an old Wellington in the past, so any piece of rubber will do. So it's going to sit like that. And then sit it there like that. That's your hinge. There's a nice overhang to make sure the rain doesn't that falls away from the box. We want to make sure that during this when there's chicks in the nest that the wind doesn't catch this and blow it up or it might end up like that and the rain will get in on the eggs and the chicks and kill them. So this is what I this is what I use normally. It won't move in the wind and the rain. So we're going to drill a hole on the front of the box here for the birds to go in and out. So if you want house sparrows the width of the hole, the diameter should be 32 millimeters. If you want to exclude house sparrows and just have blue tits, great tits and cold tits, you can go down to 28 mil. So this, I've got plenty of house sparrows. So I'm going to put a, a 28 mil hole on this one. Keep the hole up to the top part here. You don't want it down in the middle or certainly down here because a predator, a cat or something could put a, a magpie, could get at the chick so you want to make sure the hole is up here 
also when the chicks are small they can't get out you know un until they're ready to fly if you keep the hole up towards the top and that's it that's the box made up so far we've used untreated wood so it's just to keep the chemicals um, away from the chicks as much as possible but by using a water-based wood preservative on the outside it will make the box last as long as possible so we've got uh, a hinged roof uh, a hole that will fit blue tits great tits we've got drainage holes underneath and we've got holes up here to fix to a tree using galvanized wire winter coming into the spring is the ideal time to make this and put it up in your garden it should last about 10 years you don't have to go very high with this one so you know head high is fine uh, once it's well clear of any any predators like cats um, you don't have to go up a ladder and and ideally then you want sort of just a, a, a clear line of sight so they can fly to and from the nest box you can screw this to an old shed you can screw it to a wall or you can hang it on a tree all right so the next one is very similar so we'll cut another 1500 board okay so this one is exactly the same as the other one the whole fronted one but this one is going to be open fronted that's the two sides from a previous cut I have a I have an angle on this one so I'm going to use this one for the roof I'll do the back next which is the same as the last one 460 uh, it's completely different to the whole fronted one but it's simpler to make the blue tits cold tits great tits and house sparrows and starlings all like to nest inside a cavity go into the hole and right in the dark to assemble it the same way as we did the last one like I said that was the floor yeah. this was the roof so that's it that's the front I do this one So these are the drainage holes, the same as the other one, just for fixing it. They're the two boxes. So this one has the whole entrance for particular species that like to nest inside a cavity, like blue tits, cold tits, house sparrows. Whereas this one has an, is easier to make, uh, is open fronted where they'll build their nest and something like a robin or a pied wagtail will sit there but they'll be able to see predators coming and they slip off the nest so this one this one can be left out on the open it could be put up against that shed there uh, up against a wall up against a tree and the birds are quite safe and happy to go in and out this one you have to have it hidden behind ivy or a creeper or something uh, to give it some protection so there's just the opening showing but the bird will and, and the whole box will be largely hidden so you have to be more careful about where you place this if I paint it all dark brown and then I've got this big white thing in here it's only going to show up you know now I use kind of a dark oak color they they may choose to come into your garden from nearby woodland but they're 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 just as wild as any other wild birds out there so what you're doing is you're actually attracting wildlife you're attracting biodiversity into your garden there's actually a scarcity of these cavities safe warm clean dry places for them to nest you know there's not that many old trees with holes in them because because of health and safety we cut down the trees if they're getting anyway old or diseased um, and if you think about your houses there was a time when there was old wooden fascia and soffit and there might be a hole where a, a house sparrow or a swift could get in but now they're all PVC and there's no holes or cavities for them to get into so you're definitely helping 
uh, the small birds who can't find a natural cavity you're definitely helping them by giving them a place to place to live during the summer if they find a box in a garden which is in a safe place and there's plenty of food nearby they will fight very hard to hold on to that territory because it's a valuable territory um, so the same birds will use the same boxes over and over again uh, if they're in in a good spot in a, in a good in a good garden they all feed their chicks on insects so if you've got you know wildflowers in your garden or you know patch of nettles or compost heap um, anything where, where, where insects can live the birds will find food for their chicks so you don't want the garden to be too tidy there may be trees around but very often there, if you check there aren't holes in them the tree has to be old enough to have the cavity to form and then the form the cavity inside has to be big enough for them to make a nest in all across Europe our house sparrows and starlings are declining it's just in general there's less and less food out there in, in the countryside there's less and less places for them to to nest so anything we can do to help and gardens are becoming more and more important for biodiversity oh, the difference with this one is I'm actually going to paint the inside just because first of all it's a bit open to the weather and secondly I don't want a big bright area to be visible to predators so I want it as dark and as shady as possible there's probably only room for one territory of great tits and they won't tolerate another one so maybe if you put in one box with the 28 mil and maybe one box with the 25 mil diameter hole you'll have one one territory of blue tits and one territory of great tits the house sparrows are more social and they will tolerate other house sparrows nesting near them so you can put up boxes quite near each other with the 32 mil diameter hole um, so the trick is to have a few different types um, again you probably won't have in an average garden you won't have more than one pair of robins or one pair of pied wagtails so again maybe two of these type of ones if you have the right uh, type of place to put them so that big plank of wood that we got from the hardware store uh, you can get three of these type boxes from that if, if you have off cuts of timber of any kind uh, definitely keep them you can use them and they don't have to be six by one they can be seven eight nine by one if you have them for other types of boxes you can use plywood um, and you know for odd shapes plywood is probably better this is a, a box designed for swifts any kind of composite board that isn't waterproof it's just a waste of time it'll fall apart as soon as it gets wet um, so the important thing is that you give the birds a safe dry warm place to nest that the weather won't get at it the predators won't get at it and that the box will last and won't fall down in the first wind so you want to make sure you fix it properly to a wall or to a tree and then when you're talking about the open fronted ones you want to make sure that you uh, hide it behind some creeper of some kind that's been up there for about 10 years and it's used every year now I've, so far I've just put one wire on this but I will put another one down here the idea is that um, the box is firmly secured to the tree but it's not squeezing the tree strangling it and as the tree grows you can lift up the box and you'll have more slack on the wire um, and I'll put a second one just to keep it firm around here and it doesn't need to be any higher than that and there's a, a clear flight path in and out and it's pointing in a northeasterly direction sheltered from the weather and the sun the rain won't be driven into it that's a perfect a perfect location for it <laughs>